Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, March 3rd. March. Feels good to say that. <laughs> Boy, it's uh, there's snow and we're under a winter storm watch this weekend. Doesn't feel like, well I guess it does feel like March because beginning of March is always a bit dicey. We are looking forward to, uh, to spring like you wouldn't believe. I'm sure a lot of you guys are. So, got my Rop uh, Cherrywood nice little pipe and I'm smoking some mixture 79 I smoke a lot of mixture 79 um, down here in the shop it's just it's one of those pleasant easy flavorful blends that I that I enjoy smoking while I work kinda like Carter Hall um, and you guys that uh, watched that video I guess it was last week that first Tobacco Talk Tuesday. I uh, appreciate it. I got some very good uh, comments on that and it was uh, pretty well received so I'm happy about that. I'm gonna definitely be doing more of those um, probably I don't want to commit to any timeline because I, I really can't uh, but right now I'm thinking maybe two a month. Uh, we'll, we'll just have to see how that that goes but like I said they'll always come out on a Tuesday so hope you hope you continue to enjoy that. So we got a couple of shout outs today. If I can figure out what I did with them. There we go. Um, two guys I'd like you to go check out. Both very early on in their YTPC appearance, but uh, both guys I think well worth your time and a, and a subscription. The first is a, is a gentleman who goes by the name Smokin' Papa, and I will put a link down below to Smokin' Papa's channel. Uh, he's got a few videos. He did a really nice intro last week. Um, got to learn quite a bit about him, and uh, well, well worth a watch. Uh, and his channel looks very promising, so I recommend you head on over to Smokin' Papa and uh, and give him a sub as soon as uh, as soon as this video ends. And the other is a um, very new member of the YTPC, and he goes by the name Jordan. And Jordan posted his first video just this weekend. Um, he's got just a just a handful of subs. I think he's up to about 16 now. Um, and uh, very very interesting gentleman. Very interesting channel. So Jordan, um, he, he's in Canada. He um, just started, like I said the the other day, uh, gave a nice introduction. He's interested in hot rods, which is kind of cool. And uh, from my perspective, one of the, the, the most interesting things about Jordan is that he's making pipes. And he took us on a little tour of the shop and showed us some pipes and everything. It's a fantastic intro video, well, well worth watching. So again, link below for Jordan. Go check him out. Give him a subscription. Welcome him into well, welcome both these guys into the community. And uh, and let's let's keep it growing. So it's been a it's been a somewhat hectic week actually. Not not for pipe reasons, unfortunately. I don't mind when it's hectic for pipe reasons. <laughs> Nothing bad, just just life. But that's okay. We will get through. Um, you saw the last week, last Saturday, I went to the. Uh, Line Nielsen Tool Work Show had a great time with that. Uh, thanks to all you guys that watched and commented on that video uh, last week. It was a lot of fun making that, and I'm definitely going to try to do more of those. I, I, you know, it's I really enjoy the video that I'm doing right now, and and making this and and the interaction that I have with you all. But it's just nice to to do something different sometimes, and that was a lot of fun. You know, you see things differently when you're. Well, if you've ever had guests in town and you've taken them, you know, sightseeing, you, you, you see the things that you see every day in a different light. And it's kind of the same thing when you're just taking along a camera because, you know, as you, as you walk around you realize, I've seen this a hundred times, but the person seeing it may, have, may not even have the context for it. And you got to go and, and, and build that. And actually, I, I felt like I, I was seeing it for the first time in a lot of ways. And... Well, the truth is I was seeing it for the first time because it had changed so much <laughs> since the last time I was there. But, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to change a, 
uh, a ship built in the 1890s very much. It's very recognizable. But that was a good time. Um, I don't know if I said it in the video, but it's kind of interesting. The, um, the place where that uh, tool show was, it was inside of a seaport museum. The museum, like I said in the video, looks really interesting, and I'm looking forward to making a trip to that someday. But the place where, the, the actual room where that um, tool show was, is a working shop where they, um, they build boats in, in what I assume is the original style um, from different periods in history. Now they do have power tools, you saw as I was scanning around that there was like a bandsaw and there were drills and things like that. So it's not that they're you know, doing it all with just traditional methods, but the, the designs are, are historically accurate. And that's kind of neat. I don't know if when there's not an event there if you can actually go in and watch them work or, or how that, that works. But it, it's, it's really neat that they have that as a part of the museum, you know, an actual functioning shop. But you know how it is. We we we, we tool geeks will watch anything being made. Uh, I I love woodworking and I love uh, pipe making and all that. But you set me down in front of an episode of how it's made, or even worse, a marathon of how it's made, and I'm lost. I can lose an entire weekend on that. There's just something about seeing things come together that fascinates me, and I think a lot of you guys are feel the same way. Um, and that's one of the reasons why you know the videos like I do with the the pipe restoration are are popular. It's not so much that I'm all that enthralling a speaker, but it, you get to see the, the the thing emerge. And that's one of the reasons why I, I enjoy making them is that I I feel like I'm I'm kind of speeding up that process for myself, and when I'm editing it, it's it's kind of neat. Like I I notice things that I didn't notice, and uh, and I learn a lot from that too. You know, I, I see myself doing the thing sometimes, and think, ah, oh, you could have done it that way. So it's always always good to keep learning. You never never stop. And um, just to briefly touch on uh, my my Friday ramble this week, uh, that was really the point that I was or part of the point that I was trying to get to, and uh, I heard from Eric. Blue collar pipe smoker. He was very gracious. Uh, I I should have I should have been more careful in when I was making that video. And this is the problem with Friday rambles is that I'm really not prepared for them. But I wasn't in any way trying to criticize Eric. I was criticizing myself and my reaction to Eric. Eric does great work, and and it's another example of how when you watch these things being done, um, you 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 pick up on things that. You, you may not think about if you're actually doing it. So watching other people work can trigger things in yourself that, you know, might make you a better worker in whatever it is that you're doing. And it doesn't have to be like, if I'm restoring pipes, I have to watch somebody restore pipes. I've learned a lot about making stems, watching machining videos, you know, guys working in steel. I, I can translate some of those or transfer some of those methods to uh, to my own work and actually one of the, the biggest uh, breakthroughs that I've that I've had well, not breakthroughs but but improvements in my own workflow uh, has been a uh, a new way of grinding a lathe tool that I I learned about I think it was a YouTube video where it was mentioned and then I had to go hunt down the profile and that actually took a long time because it's not a lathe tool that's used very much anymore it's called a knife edge tool and I had a lot of trouble finding images that would allow me to replicate it and grinding my own version of it. I eventually found a like 1940-something uh, machinist book on Google that had a couple of pages and showed some, some pictures of this. And I ground one up, and man, for, for cutting things like Delrin and, and acrylic, it is unbelievable. It's, it's night and day compared to the kind of tool that I was using, which was just the standard uh, turning tool. So yeah, you you learn things, and you never know where you're going to learn them. Yeah. Life is good. So the mixture seventy nine doesn't want to stay lit for me today, but that's okay. I know you like the the giant flame. That reminds me, I don't know what you're seeing right now, but I'm seeing a flame that ends right there. 
It always surprises me when people say, oh, you got a flamethrower there, or you're going to burn your eyebrows up, because it doesn't look that big to me. <laughs> I guess it's just, I did it accidentally. I mean, it's how I set up the lighter many, many years ago, and I never really thought about it until I started getting comments on the, the size of the flame. I like it because I can hold it above and draw it down in, and it, it lights very well, so I'm not going to change it, but I, I don't do it on purpose. It's just the way things evolve. So I'll give you a couple of quick looks at what's going on here in the shop. I've been working on this pipe for a customer, and it's a little Sabinelli, uh, done very much in a Peterson style, and it needed a stem. So I've been making the the, the gentleman wanted it in a, uh, a red stem. So I'm working on this red acrylic. It's a military mount. It fits in there nicely. Obviously, it needs a bend still. But uh, I think that's going to look quite nice. And the pipe still needs to be uh, spiffed up a bit and buffed and waxed and so on. But it's well on its way. And the other one is, uh, well, I can't put this one together for you because I've got some tape around the, the tenon. But this is a Vulcanite stem uh, that I've been working on. And I'm hoping to finish both of these up today. Uh, Vulcanite stem is much earlier on. This, this guy really just needs to be bent and it, it's done. Bent the final polish. This one you can see, I hope you're interested in this, hopefully you can see there's still some file marks around the, the button there and some, some uh, maybe right in here you'll be able to catch some file marks as I move it in and out of the light. Uh, and I got, the profile is a little fat up here, so I still got to do some work in there. But I'm hoping to get both of these pipes finished today. And they'll let me get them out in the mail to their owners uh, early next week. And guys, I'm very, very close, I dare I say, to being caught up. So I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, love doing the work, very happy for all the work, but I feel terrible somebody sends me a pipe and I can't even open the box for three weeks you know it's, it's just that's not the kind of service I like to provide but I'm getting caught up uh, very very close now so I am going to continue to smoke my mixture 79 and do some more stem work here in the shop and I will let you guys go off and do whatever it is that you have planned for this Sunday. I hope you have a great Sunday and a fantastic week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.